History has often been unkind to the Kurds, a cycle of repeated betrayals. When a U.S.-led coalition expelled Saddam Hussein's forces from Kuwait in 1991, then-President H.W. Bush encouraged the Iraqi people to oust the dictator altogether. There's another way for the bloodshed to stop, and that is for the Iraqi military and the Iraqi people to take matters into their own hands, to force Saddam Hussein, the dictator, to step aside. In response, Iraq's Kurds rose up against Saddam. But when his elite forces advanced north, the Kurds got no help. Millions fled to the mountains, and many others were slaughtered trying to resist. During the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq in 2003, the Kurds were again enthusiastic allies, assisting American and British forces in their drive to Baghdad. When ISIS swept through Iraq, Kurdish resistance was crucial in keeping the militants at bay. In Syria, the U.S. turned to the Kurds there, the YPG, as key allies, the main ground force that led the liberation of Raqqa, ISIS's headquarters. But in both Iraq and Syria, the Kurds have been allies of convenience, deserted when no longer needed in the geopolitical chessboard. Last year, the U.S. stood by while the Iraqi military drove the Kurds back from territory they held during the fight against ISIS. We thought that the people who were verbally telling us they were our friends and would support us, that they would have supported us, or if not, stay silent. Now it's serious Kurds that face attack by Turkish forces as U.S. troops pull back. Turkey sees the Kurds as terrorists, allied to the insurgents in its own Kurdish areas. The modest U.S. presence has deterred a Turkish incursion and held the Syrian regime at bay. But President Trump has repeatedly threatened to pull U.S. forces out of Syria. Let the other people take care of it now. Very soon. Very soon. We're coming out. Again in December last year, he announced U.S. forces were withdrawing, tweeting. We have defeated ISIS in Syria. My only reason for being there during the Trump presidency. On both occasions, advisors persuaded the president to change course. But now he has given Turkey the green light to cross the border in a move that stunned even his closest allies at home. If he follows through with this, it'd be the biggest mistake of his presidency. The Kurds themselves are separating the president from the people. The spokesman of the Syrian Democratic Forces, Mustafa Bali, tweeting. Despite the president's decision to pave the way for Turkish invasion, American people are true friends of the SDF. The Kurds have made it clear Clear they'll divert forces currently guarding ISIS prisoners to the front lines, with possibly dangerous consequences. Unsure of what their ally intends, they will, as they have done so often, fight for their very existence. Arwa Damon CNN, Istanbul.